Hey there, it's Professor S, and for the next five minutes or so, I want to talk to you about functional groups. Now, this is a topic in biology that stems from organic chemistry because in introductory biology classes, and, and even in courses like anatomy and physiology, you're going to be dealing as a student with organic macromolecules. You need to know a little bit about them. And if you've ever looked at an organic molecule, like acetyl coenzyme A here, they're big, right? They're called macromolecules for a reason. There's a lot going on. And if you want to be able to look at one of these molecules and understand it, you need to have this idea of functional groups in mind. Uh, you can think of organic molecules like this one as, well, kind of analogous to a Christmas tree. They're this core tree-like skeleton of carbon and hydrogen atoms. That's what makes them organic. And then hanging off that skeleton are these functional groups these collections of atoms that have associated with them certain consistent chemical properties. So if you see that group of atoms, that functional group in an organic molecule, by default you know something about that molecule and more specifically that location on that molecule. Now if you actually go someplace like Wikipedia and look at a list of all the functional groups that are out there, uh, like what you would deal with in say an organic chemistry curriculum, it's a long list, but for biology courses, I like to focus on six that I find students benefit from knowing. So in this video, and I lied earlier five minutes, huh? in two additional videos on functional groups, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to present each of these six to you, and I'm going to ask you to focus on the following, which is what my students need to know, and that is the name of the group. That is the symbol for the group, and then finally, the property or properties associated with that group. So with that said, let's dive right into an example. First example is the methyl group. Methyl groups are composed of a single carbon covalently bound to three hydrogen atoms. Three hydrogens, the methyl group, like what you're seeing there. Now, with it only containing carbon and hydrogen, which form nonpolar bonds with each other, shockingly, methyl groups are hydrophobic. That's their chemical property. Now, when you see functional groups written in text, just to identify the group, not even to see it on a molecule, but to see it in text, uh, it's worth thinking about how they're written. So let's pop over to the other side of the screen for just a moment. So here we have methyl group written. And keep in mind, organic molecules aren't two-dimensional, they're three-dimensional. A functional group can be hanging off of it anywhere in space. It's not just spread left to right. And so it's written CH3 or H3C. And that, that line there, it's not a hyphen and it's not a dash. It's the covalent bond connecting it to the larger molecule, right? Remember, I said these are like ornaments on a tree. Carbon can form four covalent bonds total. Three of them in this case are with hydrogen. Um, that means one of them is with the main molecule. And so when this is written in text, it's not a dash, it's not a hyphen, it's the covalent bond and it must be next to carbon because that's where it forms. So it's either written CH3 or H3C to emphasize three hydrogens and that the carbon connects. Now here's an example of a molecule that contains a lot of methyl groups. Uh, we're looking here at cholesterol. This is sort of the master steroid. Uh, I have another video on steroids that you can watch. Uh, but cholesterol, as you can see, has five methyl groups in its structure. So aside from the fact that it's almost entirely carbon and hydrogen to begin with, each of those areas with the methyl group is very hydrophobic. Now, if we have a hydrophobic functional group, there must be a hydrophilic one. So let's erase this. Let's check out the hydroxyl group. Hydroxyl, as the name implies, contains a hydrogen and an oxygen, hydroxyl. And that's what it is, in fact, an oxygen covalently bound to a hydrogen. Now, since you should recognize oxygen pretty much forms polar covalent bonds with every atom that isn't oxygen, uh, this is a very polar formation and it's a hydrophilic group. It's going to easily hydrogen bond with water. As you can see over there, OH or HO with the bond on the oxygen is how it's written in text. And here's an example, sucrose or table sugar. Look at those eight hydroxyl groups. There's some oxygens in the core skeleton making it even more hydrophilic, but all eight of those hydroxyl groups are very hydrophilic. It's no wonder table sugar dissolves so well in water. So there's a quick introduction. And I will see you for another five minutes to later to talk about some more functional groups.
Hi, this is Professor S. And I'm Big Al. I really liked that last video. I thought it was pretty good. Me too. Hold on. Something's not right here. What's wrong? My hands. Where are my hands? I don't know. I'm just a sock. Well, if I don't have my hands, how will they know what I'm saying? How awful. Yes. Well, here's a couple more videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you can see all his new videos as they come out. Alright, where are my glasses? And who took my socks? Uh, oh. We have to go now.